That actually reminds me of this conversation I got into on Twitter once, which was um, a very difficult subject for me, and especially for me to broach, it wasn't particularly helpful. Um, but what I was trying to get across, I was trying to get, like, okay, so it was about racism, um, and it was about structural racism, and... No how much you love it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's the disorder. <laughs> anyway, um, I was trying to get across this idea of like, so if, if you have like, psych, like a psychosis or like you are paranoid or whatever like kind of thing, you're taking in a sensory stimuli, right? And then you're applying a label based on that stimuli and then you're coming to a misperception, right? So um, uh, yeah, that's the basics of, of some like misperceptions, right? And, 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 and that is similar to if you see somebody of a certain color and then you infer some form of attribute based on that color like you think oh or like a certain gender you think oh that person won't be able to do this thing or that person's probably really good at this thing mm -hmm. um like hey, there's stuff about asian people there's stuff about black people there'll be stuff about loads of people right it's it's ultimately that there's loads of structural stuff and there's loads of historical stuff but on the individual level and on the collective level it's a misperception right mm. and it, it is and it's wrong and it could be educated out and it could be um therapized out and that kind of thing right and i was basically getting into the discussion of like well could you treat t some aspects of racism like a mental health disorder because it's a misperception happening on the part of the of the racist right and obviously that was not a i didn't i didn't put quite <laughs> expect uh the uh, response i got because i i was trying to i was trying to provoke an interesting conversation and i'm sure i was tone deaf in some ways um but what i found really interesting was the overarching sort of takeaway of it is that the way that we're classifying things is that if lots of people are crazy in a certain way then that's not a mental health condition that's like as that's like a how would you describe it it's not it's not like it's not a mental health condition because lots of people have it. Yeah. And that's just... So, like, if, 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 if half the population, for example, think a thing, then it's not, like, just half the people have a mental health condition. We need to then think about the term disorder, right? Yeah. So, it disorder almost inherently would suggest uh, a deviation from the norm. Sure. And when we talk about sort of these mental health disorders... Like, I mean, okay, we could think about flaws you can think about something as a flaw in the way that the human brain works right the way that um you know say that we don't quite understand time or the way that like you know it'll fill in blanks for us and it can sometimes fill in those blanks incorrectly mm -hmm. or even you know we dissociate um sometimes uh during dreams or uh when our sleep wake cycle is interrupted um any number of these things right or we mm -hmm. can get anxiety you know for uh for things that um we we really shouldn't be feeling anxiety for right all of these things, you can see them in healthy people, right? To some degree. Mm -hmm. So obviously we need to, when we're de determining what a disorder is, we, we necessarily need to say, okay, is this happening to everyone or just a very small subsection of people? Um, because if it's happening to everyone, then we can't necessarily call it disorder. We can just, it, it's just how people are. A trend. Yeah. Exactly. And so I think... As well, th there obviously are other things, uh, you know, when it comes to disorders. There are, like... Uh, quite quite obvious deviations from the norm but then again you think about genetic variation right and we only necessarily call something a disorder when it impacts normal functioning and that's the key there like it well there's, there's two there's two parts to it it needs to be affecting not everyone um and it also needs to impact normal functioning but the question i would have is it, it, it sorry do you, do you finish? i was gonna say necessarily actually i just realized that to impact normal functioning you need to have a normal so ne necessarily in saying impacts normal functioning you are implying that it can't be happening to everyone because then that would just be normal functioning. Yes, but I think what you can say is rather than rather than taking deviation from the norm, you can you can talk about deviation from truth. So if you have like I know that you can get into the epistemology, is there anything is there is anything true? Is there objective truth? All that kind of thing. But you can have genuine like you, like half the population have got this uh idea that X like X characteristic is also correlated with with this other characteristic, mm. and then you can check. And if it's not, they're wrong. Yeah, but you can. But you can't. Then you, people can be wrong without it being um uh, a mental condition. And this is so you're, you're so you're saying so you're saying sort of misperception um would be it's, it's like kind a of wrong the, model in the yeah, brain. Yeah. yeah, but that's your basis, right? The, the sort of misperception is kind of the basis for labeling it as akin to a mental disorder, right? 
but misperceptions happen in humans constantly yeah. and that's the that's the issue right just because um half the population believes something that is wrong that doesn't mean that um we, we literally we literally cannot call that a mental disorder because yeah. humans are so bad at so many things like we are bad at we we can't look at a number we can't look at like you know a number of things um over like five and be able to accurately sort of know how much is there or guess how much is there right like we're very bad at a number of things we can have a lot of misperceptions when it comes to time when it comes to any any number of things that's just fundamental to humans so a misperception in and of itself is it's not indicative of any sort of disorder you know so, so I, I guess I, I i'm getting my terminology probably wrong for what i mean to talk about um because i don't know or how all the terminology is used when you're talking about mental disorder you're tra- are you talking about a, a structural difference in the brain because obviously it's not a, t- a structural difference in the brain i'm talking about sort of false belief the kind of thing that therapy can therapize you out of um like you have a you have a, a functioning brain that is able to accurately model reality is able to um take an in information and process it roughly correctly and then carry out actions based on that uh, and it's not doing it based on any sort of weird things that the brain is just not doing in the normal sense you've got a, a, an otherwise functioning brain that just has an a correlation or sorry that just has a link between the idea of for example blackness and then the idea of another thing and that's that's not necessarily it's not it's not a structural issue with the brain it is a but it although it is a structure it's ultimately got a structure in some form between the connection between neurons um and, uh, yeah, but- and why, my question is is that if you have some someone with a false belief that's not for example psychotic or got like some kind of structural problem they've got a false belief mm-hmm. right they've got a belief about women for example mm-hmm. um or if you have a group of people like the population of a country who have a belief about women right you you think about those and you label them differently but is there actually any structural difference on the individual level between a mass belief and an individual belief? But I think that, I mean, I feel like the fact that we've got to, we have to interrogate our own beliefs. Um, all of us have to interrogate our own beliefs in order to root out the false ones. Shows that false beliefs are just a natural uh, a natural thing when it, that, comes, that comes to humans. Yeah. And so by labeling uh, undesirable false beliefs as inherently... Uh, mental disorders you you're basically saying that this is a mental disorder not based on any like on on anything other than we think this is bad or just the data says it's wrong yeah but that's but we there you're not applying that to other false beliefs that are innocuous um that are also wrong right once it starts affecting once it starts (laughs) again (laughs) right and so like and, and and but doing that to racism would be really weird because it's it it is just a kind of normal. It, it's it's an understandable outcome of how the human brain functions. I'm not saying that being yeah. racist is understandable, but what I'm saying is that you can understand how racism how develops. would develop and yeah. propagate itself based yeah. on how the human brain just is wired to work. Yeah, I don't think human beings necessarily have the intuitive ability to create models of accu- like accurate models of reality, because the models we build are based on the biases we're exposed to and the rhetoric we're exposed to. Mm. And I don't know, it's like we, we're, we're never really um, prone to seeing truth as truth. I don't, I don't know how to describe well, it's it. Be, it's because those models are never, th- those models aren't for truth. Like well, evolution is not, evolution has not developed a brain that is capable of building models that um, eke out truth from the universe. Evolution has created a brain. Evolution has created a brain that keeps the, that makes more brains. It's predictive. So, yeah. 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 But, that, but, but, but what I mean is, sorry, just to pick up on what Jeff yeah. said there, when you're saying accurate model, that yeah. to a certain extent is almost a contradiction in terms. A model is not accurate because yeah. it's a model. Yeah. The, by definition, it is a simplification. Yeah. It's it's only accurate if it's predictive. Yeah. And so if if you, um, you know, if you, for example, have this have an idea about a, a black person that the average black person might be less um, intelligent, that might be predictive because that person might have had less access to education or they might have had less financial resources because of... Or more lead paint. Or yeah. more lead paint, and yes. All that kind of stuff. So it might be predictive, yeah. but then it can be eaten up by a larger model that goes, okay, well, we've got a disparity of wealth here. Yeah. We've mm. got a history of um, like 
like exposure to lead paint. We've got all this other stuff, and that eats up the the old model and builds it into a larger model, yeah, yeah. where you still are able to predict. Oh, this person might have had different access to um, educational resources, mm. um, or their parents might have been working longer hours because they are discriminated against. So it's still predictive, and it's more predictive yeah. than the old model, and is able to take into into account edge cases where, yeah. for example, somebody might be black and also the president. Right? If if you think that, that you have these old beliefs about black people that yeah. that they are X, then it's not predictive for the black a black person being the president. Yeah. Um so so It's like what we were talking about in After Dark recently, when we're uh, building like higher definition models of yeah, like, exactly. of understanding. Yeah. And I feel like if you've got a, a population or an individual with a with a model that is is in some either limited or actually is not predictive, but the brain is very resistant to changing the models it has as long as they don't kill you, then regardless of whether that's on an individual level or on a societal level, that is a mapping of the brain which is inaccurate to reality. Yeah, but I guess what I'm saying is that ultimately it doesn't matter whether a model is uh, truer to reality or doesn't predict, it, it doesn't matter. Because if we start, that's us taking our sort of moral uh, ideas and, and applying it to how uh, applying it to how our brain builds models or the models that our brain builds ultimately when we talk about mental illness I, I feel like it's slightly slightly different because what you're doing there is saying ah this model is uh not true like it 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 it, 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 it deviates heavily from truth right yeah. it doesn't predict truth um and also on top of that uh it causes harm to other people in a way that i personally deem morally uh bad mm. No. Well, it just causes harm to other people. I think that's it, enough. Oh yeah, but you need to. Yeah, but you deem it personally morally bad. Like, okay. come on. I mean, if you're yeah. harming black people and you're a white supremacist, a white supremacist, I feel like morally you're gonna be like, eh, it's fine. My my point is that other people might have different morals based on on, on this. Yeah. Um. So, what you're doing there is saying this moral, uh, th this um, this model, uh, deviates uh from reality. Yeah. Um. And then you're almost kind of skipping over that you're saying. Also, I find it morally bad in the way that it deviates, uh, or the results of this. Of the, the, uh, no, the, I'm not. The results of the deviation. No, no because I'm, that's not what I'm saying. No, because there are. Well, I do find it morally bad. No, 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 I know, but there are plenty of other models <laughs> yeah. that your brain has that are that deviate from reality and don't predict for uh, don't predict uh, don't predict reality uh, accurately. That yeah, don't but that's have why those. You get therapy. Yeah, but they don't have those moral. <laughs> they don't have those moral implications. Yes. So, you see what I mean? Well, if they don't cause harm to other people or yourself. And they are, to a certain extent, innocuous, yeah. Yeah, and so I think that sort of classifying um, just, just that sort of improper model that is not based on any um, uh, poor functioning of the brain, um, rather, like, based on any abnormal functioning of the brain, um, classifying that as a mental illness is almost like kind of lumping in things that aren't similar, right? Because when we talk about mental illnesses, generally what we're talking about is the brain behaving abnormally, right? Um and then causing uh, causing uh, uh, sort of genuine distress in that sense. Uh, whereas in this case, we're talking about the brain functioning perfectly normally, but causing distress, and we don't like it. Like uh. you know, what I mean, you, you you I don't think you can have your cake and eat it too, and say that um, this is a mental this is a mental disorder because um, of the outcome. When um, but that's what the DSM five does. It's all based on the outcome. It's it, but it's slightly different in that the okay. So the way that the DSM five draws the line is that sometimes these are things that can happen normally, right? And it almost exists on a spectrum. Generally, when we when we draw that line and we say and we say um, it's uh, affecting your daily activities, it's because we need to draw a line somewhere because it's just it's just a spectrum from like uh, you feel very sad to you are depressed. Right. I mean, obviously, there are things that come along with depression, but like you don't always have all the symptoms of depression and you could have a reason for being depressed and you need to draw the line somewhere. You, you absolutely need to draw that line. OCD, you can have like, I mean, you can have um, elements of OCD, but not have OCD. Yeah. You know, like if you're spending not enough, not a lot of time doing these like sort of little compulsive behaviors, then you're not going to get necessarily diagnosed with OCD. Do you know what I mean, even though even if uh, theoretically you were to have the same, it was to have the same sort of source in the brain, yeah. right? It's, that's, that's the point. That's the point of saying it affects daily activities. I think it's hilarious because it's yeah. an arbitrary line, but it's, um, it is an arbitrary line, but it's a functional one um, done necessarily through the fact that otherwise, where are we going to draw the line between normal, normal activity um, and abnormal? We draw the line at, it's bothering you. 
it's bothering you real bad yeah and that's basically what we do as a mental health disorder right whereas like if if everyone had symptoms of ocd like to to the to the diagnostic uh, to the diagnostic criteria ocd wouldn't exist that'd just be how people are there's lots of crazy stuff that people do yeah you know sure yeah, yeah, yeah of course no i think it was just it was just an attempt my thought process was just an attempt really to go to to sort of talk about the fact that you know you can have a moral conversation about things like racism or sexism mm. or 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 transphobia or homophobia or whatever but but there's also a way of bringing that conversation onto well th- these ways you are using to understand the world are just also incorrect mm-hmm. they are they are incorrect and you can defend them all you like but they don't predict for for anything yeah and uh, that they don't predict for anything in a way that can't be predicted in a better way um and also i agree the empathy that in terms of- i understand the, the 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 um the mental disorder thing obviously yeah. i'm using the wrong terminology i just mean it's a false belief mm-hmm. that has horrible societal implications but but is there a difference between a false belief on an individual level and a false false belief on a societal level other than the scale and who you get to treat it?